so this video is to talk about dietary milk or protein uh, protein milk intolerance okay so what dietary milk protein intolerance or what we call cow's milk protein allergy is actually an intestinal allergy to proteins that are exi existed in the cow's milk okay like what like casein okay so it's mostly due to cow's milk protein allergy or intolerance but other proteins also can cause allergy not only the cow's milk proteins can lead to allergy but also the soya protein that may lead to allergy the wheat like in celiac disease okay the eggs eggs sometimes have an allergy fish allergy okay so the cow's milk protein allergy is mostly in the first year of life what really happens in the cow's milk allergy is that you administer the baby uh, cow's milk okay and the cow's milk has uh, proteins one of them uh, uh, is the casein okay the intestinal igg or t cell uh, will not will consider this casein as a foreign body that it should attack okay so the igg igg will attack this uh, a protein of the milk and that will lead to allergy to the effacement of the villus of the uh, intestinal tract and so on okay so the cow's milk or protein milk allergy uh, is divided into two uh, reactions okay the acute reaction we have two types the first one is the acute type in which we have igg I, i'm sorry ige reaction to the cow's milk okay so ige reaction this is the first type and it is extremely rare to happen the second type the second type which is a delayed reaction toward delayed reaction okay i'm sorry uh -huh. delayed reaction toward the cow's milk protein which uh, in which the igg antibodies not ige ige is for the uh, acute onset reaction the delayed reaction igg or t cells mediated antibodies will attack these proteins and will cause the symptoms of the cow's milk allergy okay so uh, though the most of cases we have no ige uh, no ige reaction okay most of cases we have igg reaction delay type okay but a lot of cases of cow's milk allergy uh, are associated with asthma eczema and hay fever that are associated with ige reaction so there is a co-concordance or overlapping between the cow's milk allergy and the asthma eczema and hay fever okay what are the clinical features of the cow's milk allergy we have a gastrointestinal fever uh, uh, symptoms features okay or extra gastrointestinal symptoms like skin feature for example the gas for a gastrointestinal symptoms we have diarrhea that is bloody in a lot of times okay we have a bloody diarrhea and this diarrhea is due to associated food protein induced enterocolitis syndrome i know it's look it, it trees hard to uh, remember but it is associated food protein it is a food a protein or milk protein induced enterocolitis syndrome okay so it is an enterocolitis syndrome induced by food protein so this is how to remember the diarrhea that results from the cow's milk allergy also we may have vomiting as a, a, a a clinical feature failure to thrive the diarrhea and the vomiting will lead to failure to thrive okay we have GERD or a gastroesophageal reflux okay recurrent mouth ulcers or allergic pancolitis so these are all are presentations of uh, the cow's milk allergy also we may have atopic reaction like asthma like eczema okay we may have a skin rash skin rush or family history to reaction to food how to investigate the cow's milk allergy actually the most reliable method to investigate cow's milk allergy is a trial of cow's milk protein elimination so they stop giving the cow's milk protein that may lead to the cow's milk allergy and when you stop the cow's milk protein or eliminate it okay for at least two weeks you expect that there will 
be no more allergy or no more diarrhea, vomiting, fail to thrive, or that symptoms. Okay, if you still have these symptoms, then the problem is not in cow's milk protein. So you look further for other causes. So the question now is why do we have to wait two, uh, to wait two, two weeks before we look for the results of cow's milk allergy or cow's milk protein elimination? Because it, the, villi, the villi in the small intestine that were destructed due to the cow's milk due to the reaction to cow's milk protein will take it or will take two weeks to reheal after you stop uh, cow's milk so you have uh, you can't expect that immediately after stopping the cow's milk protein that you will have uh, an immediate re uh, response no you have to wait two weeks uh, tells the uh, these uh, villi uh, recover okay so this is the first method of uh, investigating cow's milk then we have a small intestine biopsy if the this uh, not respond we move to small intestine biopsy okay in small intestine biopsy you may reveal patchy partial villus atrophy so it is partial villus atrophy and i told you that we have many causes that will lead to partial villus atrophy like giardia uh, infection for example like enterocolitis okay and we have causes that lead to subtotal or total villus atrophy like celiac disease and so on okay so in cow's milk allergy biopsy you will see patchy partial villus atrophy okay and eosinophils are seen in lamina propria in a lot of cases okay you may also see eosinophilia eosinophilia so eosinophils in the blood and eosinophils in the lamina propria okay so this is uh, how to investigate the cow's milk allergy actually we have also some other uh, skin tests that can detect the presence of allergy to the cow's milk protein okay it is used in some places Okay, now let's move to the management of cow's milk allergy. The cow's milk allergy is an allergy to a protein that presents in cow's milk. Okay, so to treat that condition, we have to replace the cow, cow's milk with other type of milk. Okay, so you have to change the formula. How to change a formula? I want to tell you something before that, that the uh, one part of the problem of the uh, cow's milk protein allergy is the the presence of long peptides in its proteins okay so if we break down that peptide into smaller parts okay so then we will have less susceptibility to have allergy so we can give a formula uh, that is a uh, casein hydrolyzed paste formula and what is distinct about this formula is that it have a shorter peptides okay and that will lead to less allergy so you can give hydrolyzed formula okay what also you can give you can further uh, uh, cut the peptide you have to amino acids to amino acids that are even shorter than the peptides you have okay so we have the amino acid based formula like what like niskate okay i forgot to told you uh, to tell you that the hydrolyzed based formula one example of it is a brigestimil a brigestimil okay and about 90 percent of the patients get better by the hydrolyzed formula okay but also it needs two weeks to villi to recover okay so progestimil or the hydrolyzed formula after the progestimil or hydrolyzed formula we still have 10 percent of patients that did not get better we give them the amino acid based formula the amino acid based formula okay uh, also we have what we call soya formula and actually soya formula li like isomel is very good to be given but the bad news about the soya formula that it is allergic in 40% of patients with cow's milk allergy okay so there is about 40% co-concordance between the cow's milk protein allergy and the soya so in 40% of patients with cow's milk allergy you will also find soya protein allergy so it is a debate whether to give soya uh, for formula, formula and uh, try it at first or no okay 
it is a debate so i want to tell you that not only the cow's milk protein or the formulas may lead to cow's milk allergy also the breast feeding may lead in some circumstances to cow's milk allergy and this is due to the presence of cow's milk protein in mom a breast milk okay and what to do the mom have to avoid the cow's milk and the soya proteins she have she has to avoid the cow's milk proteins and the soya protein what about the prognosis of cow's milk protein allergy actually it's a good prognosis about 50 percent of patients will heal within the first one year okay 70 75 percent will heal within two years and about 90 percent the rest will heal within five years so it's good prognosis okay so this is the cow's milk protein allergy we have a condition that is called the post gastroenteritis intolerance and what i want you to know in this condition i want you to distinct between the cow's milk protein allergy and post gastroenteritis intolerance in post gastroenteritis intolerance you have a case of gastroenteritis and that this gastroenteritis that happened will lead or lead to atrophy of the villi okay it destructed the atrophy and it takes the villi two weeks to heal okay so during the these two weeks the patient may have okay uh, uh, a cow's milk protein allergy like shape okay and lactose also allergy so lactose and cow's milk protein allergy so it is an acute condition after an acute gastroenteritis and result in persistent diarrhea more than 14 days or in the chronic diarrhea more than 14 uh, days okay so you have temporary in cow's milk protein allergy it is a permanent allergy but in post gastroenteritis intolerance it is a temporary intolerance to lactose and to cow's milk protein how to diagnose this, this case you can diagnose by history okay and by, by negative a clean test uh, a clean test okay uh, and this is the reducing substances you check out the stool do you have lactose okay do you have uh, cow's milk protein and so on okay so this is the uh, how to diagnose by history and negative clean test uh, reducing substances how to treat this condition it resolves uh, if you give cow's milk protein and lactose free formula so during this period post gastroenteritis you have to avoid the gas cow milk protein and lactose formula you have to give cow's milk proteins and lactose free formula thank you very much for watching this is uh, uh, this video is about the dietary milk protein cow's milk protein allergy is a part of malabsorption okay the next video will be uh, uh, the last one uh, talking about malabsorption and chronic diarrhea thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next video